Hey everyone, Adam here and welcome to yet another video. So in one of the previous videos I built this uh, studio rack right here and as you can see it doesn't have any analog outboard gear inside. We are going to fix it today. Uh, usually the conventional advice when it comes to getting your first uh, analog outboard gear is to get a compressor like the LA2A or 1176, but these are quite expensive. So instead I got this. It was less than 200 bucks. It's Clark Technics third dimension and it's a clone of Roland's Dimension D. Uh, it, it gives you a subtle chorus providing sense of three dimensional space uh, basically making sound everything bigger wider it was used on countless recordings across various genres and you can add it to your guitars bass even vocals uh, so a couple of months ago Euge Valovirta made a review of this unit and he quite liked it so if it's good for Euge, I'm quite certain it's good for me as well. I believe he uses it almost as an always-on effect on his uh, rhythm guitars and bass. It should be quite easy to use. It has uh, four preset buttons and you can press them in combination to create more variations. So yeah, let's, let's unbox it. Then I'm gonna show you how you can wire it with your audio interface. As you can see, I have prepared some cables here, quite a lot of them. Um, then we will jump to the logic. I will set it up. And I guess then we will try some, we will try it on with some guitars, maybe even bass. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. First, it's important to mention that if you are using audio interface such as this one, Focusrite 2i2, it won't work as it has only two outputs and you will use this for your studio monitors. So you would need an audio interface with at least three or four outputs such as this one, Apollo Twin X. Now let's connect everything. So as you can see, this unit has both TRS and XLR inputs and outputs. So you could use a TRS cable uh, to connect TRS cables, connect everything, or you can use XLR cables. You have to use, or you should be using the TRS cables, balanced cables. Don't use your instrument cables for this. So first we go out of our door, out of the audio interface into the analog outboard gear. So for that I'm using the TRS cable with XLR male connector into the inputs. So the signal goes from the audio interface into the unit, the unit does its thing, does the sound processing and we go out of the unit back into the audio interface. For that I'm using XLR cable 
with or cables with both male and female connectors. As you can see, uh, this analog outboard gear has a mono or stereo mode. So for example, if you are using a bass or if, if you want to process a bass with this, uh, you can switch it to mono. But it is quite inconvenient that this switch is on the back because since this will be in, inside of my studio rack, uh, it, it won't be as easy to reach it, so it's it's quite inconvenient, but it is what it is. I'm gonna switch it back to stereo. Okay, as mentioned, I'm using UA Apollo Twin X as my audio interface and Logic Pro as my DAW. And I'm gonna sh be showing how to set everything up for these. Depending on what you have, the way you go about will differ. First, let's set our audio interface and we need to make sure that the inputs and outputs as we see them in DAW are correct. So for that, I'm, go I'm in my console for the Apollo Twin and I'm going to go to settings and here I'm just going to verify that inputs 1 are 2 are indeed inputs 1 and 2 and then that the outputs 3 and 4 are the line three and four and that's how i'm gonna see it in the logic pro next uh, here i have my two inputs and because i'm using uh, xlr cables for some reason i had to switch this from line to microphone i'm not sure why that is uh, when i tried it with trs ca cables line was the correct settings and it was working properly but for some reason with the xlr cables it needs to be set to microphone uh, I'm, I'm, i don't know if it's uh, the twin thing or what's the issue but it, it works so I'm, I'm fine with that it it's good to mute these inputs because otherwise we would hear uh, the signal coming in through our outboard gear in the console as well. So I muted this and last but not least the Q outputs. By default I believe these are set to mix but basically that means that everything you hear from your studio monitors is going out of the audio interface outputs as well. This is not what we want. We want to send a specific signal through these outputs. So it's need, it, need, it needs to be switched to line 3 slash 4. Now let's take a look at Logic. So here I have recorded some clean guitars and I've added a drum sample. But before we do anything, we need to go to the settings and in audio in general, you need to disable the software monitoring. So make sure that's off. If we play the guitars, that's without any effect. That's with the effect going from the outboard gear. Now depending how would I set the third dimension, it, it can be really subtle to more prominent, of course. Uh, so how do you set it up? I have two clean guitar tracks. Both of them are going to my bus and it's bus for clean guitars. And this bus has sent into another bus and this bus is basically my outboard gear.
So, or at least this, this one specific uh, third dimension. So here, the third dimension, uh, there is this IO effect in the audio effects, and you can find it here in utility, IO, and stereo. Now, selecting this is crucial, as I've learned, and I wasted at least a couple of hours on this. Uh, by default, the bus is in stereo, but you can switch it to mono or uh, you could do the same with tracks that are in mono. So basically based on the setting here, uh, the number of channels or the, the channels it provides you differs. So here you can see it's, it's mono and mono stereo. Uh, but yeah, we want to have this in, in stereo and, and the effect in stereo. Just make sure that, it, that the channels, they match the outputs out of your audio interface going into the outboard gear. Because initially I thought that one channel will be enough. Chorus is typically in a stereo effect, but going in, it accepts a single mono channel input. And you can enable this on, on that switch on the back of the third dimension. But since I connected only one cable and I had this uh, stereo bus, here, this effect, that, that's how it looks like. I was using two outputs, three and four, and then two inputs, one and two. But I was connecting the f physically with the cable. I was using only one cable, only one output, and that caused an issue. It was either I, I was getting no signal or there was a feedback loop. And yeah, as I mentioned, I, I lost a few hours for sure on this. So may, make sure that the way it's set up here reflects the way your audio interface is connected to the outboard gear. So uh, here in this IO plugin or uh, IO effect, you can regulate the output volume, meaning the volume going into the outboard gear and then the input volume, meaning the volume coming out of the outboard gear into the interface, into the door. So th there is uh, output level on the third dimension. And when I play it, LED lights are brightening up. So this way I, I know how much signal is coming in. I can make it stronger, but also I should make sure that it's not clipping. So I can make it weaker if, if needed. Similarly, with the input volume, if the signal coming in is too strong or too weak, I can regulate it here. Uh, there is a latency detection. So when you click it, it sends a signal. It measures how, how long it took. And based on that, it's, it's set. Uh, then there is dry wet setting. So that regulates how much of the effect coming in do you actually want. I've set it or I, I kept it at 100% because I regulate the, the amount of the effect at a different place. So yeah, that's the, that's the IO plugin and that's how you connect your audio interface into the outboard gear and, and back. So that's the dimension bus with the IO effect and the clean bus is using a send, meaning it's sending signal from the clean bus into the Dimension D bus. So now it's disabled. And if I enable it, we can hear the effect. And here I can uh, regulate how much I want to send into the outboard gear. So right now it's minus four. Uh, we can make it stronger, but 
that means that it's peaking. So I would probably need to adjust the output volume and so on. Yeah, in this case, minus four was a good place to be. Uh, you can notice that it's getting louder. And that's because it's, it's working in parallel. So our clean guitars are playing and they are still clean. And then we add to it the clean guitars coming out of the dimension. So they are in parallel and there is more of them and therefore it's, it's louder. So you need to take that into account and mix accordingly. Now, or last but not least, you don't necessarily need to use the, the buses at all. You can add the effect directly into your track. So you could do it with, with bass guitar, for example, but I think uh, using buses is, is, is better way to do so. So yeah, let's say I want to add it uh, to the clean guitar left. So we go here into the audio effects and we select the IO. And I guess if, if it was bass, we would select a mono into stereo. But if, if we have two guitars, individu individual channels, and we want to add this effect separately, then we would use mono and mono. Yeah, that's up to you or depends on the situation. And that's, that's basically it. Okay, that was quite a long video today, but I think we have covered a lot. I have learned a lot. There was a bit of frustration because it took me at least several hours to figure everything out, both on the hardware side as well as in the console and the Logic Pro. But it was success. It works. I like the way it sounds. I will be using it on my guitars uh, from time to time for sure. So yeah, overall, I'm very happy with the end result. I also like the way it looks in my studio rack. Finally, there is some outboard gear in it. And that's it. Let's wrap this up. Uh, if you have any input or any questions, please leave them in the comment below. Uh, if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow me on my journey, please consider subscribing. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.